John, and I'm here today just to share a little bit of my life story, a story of courage, perseverance, and faith. For mostly parents, having a new baby is one of the greatest joys they would ever experience in life. I'm pretty sure you'll know how that feels because I'm expecting to. But for my parents, their life was literally turned upside down the moment their child was born, and that child was me. As you can see, I'm not ordinary. I was born without arms, and I was my parents' first baby. In fact, before my mom even found out that she was pregnant with me, she had this very vivid dream. And in this dream, she walked into a room full of children, and every child she recognized, except for one. So she turned around to see that my great-grandmother was there, and she asked her, who is this child? My great-grandmother responded, that's your daughter. She then proceeded to open this big book and turn to a page to tell my mom her name is Judith. After that dream, my mom found out that she was pregnant, and nine months later, I was born, and Judith would become my Korean name. My parents had no idea that they were going to have a disabled child. It was a complete surprise and a shock to them, but they had faith. And throughout my childhood, they would tell me about this dream that my mom had to remind me how special I was and that I had a great purpose. They never gave up on me and they never expected anything less from me. So I didn't give up either and I didn't let my disability become an excuse for, for any kind of failure. And from a young age, I had this fire inside me, ready to ignite, to prove to the world that I was more than what anyone expected me to be. And I knew that I was never going to be normal, so I knew I had two choices either to be insignificant or more than what anyone expected me to be, to be extraordinary rather than ordinary. I was a very determined little child. But my parents will probably tell you their side of the story, saying how stubborn I was and how strong-willed I was. I was not an easy child. But I'd like to think that it was the self-determination that fueled my ambitions and my spiritual growth to believe that I could achieve greater things in my life. So naturally, at school, I did my best. I wanted to make my parents proud. So I tried to be the best student that I could be. And when it came to college applications, I applied for the top universities in the UK. And instead of going for one major, I decided I wanted to do mathematics and computer science. Um, despite the fact that my teachers expected me to go to art college because they saw that I had talent in art. But my rebellious side wanted to show something beyond their expectations, so that's what I decided to go for. But little did I know that my first interview experience would turn out to be one of the greatest experiences of discrimination against my disability. After six interviews at Oxford University, the senior tutor called me in for one last minute interview. And out of the blue, she asked me how I thought that I would overcome my disability to pursue higher education at the institution. I told her the truth and said I didn't think that my disability would be any problem because it never had been. And I said, you know, it would, I didn't believe that it would be a hindrance to my ability to study. But despite the fact that I had reference letters to, um, to support the fact that I was an able and capable student. She didn't think that way. She believed that my disability would become a problem for them because they had, a, they had a blind student that year who they had much trouble with. And apparently he had said the same thing as I did. Once I left the interview room, I broke down in tears. I was heartbroken and devastated. I felt wronged because I knew that my needs would be completely different from the needs of a, of a blind student. I felt like I had disappointed my parents, so I couldn't sleep for days. And if I did sleep, I was taunted by nightmares. These dark thoughts and lies could have consumed my mind, but something inside me said, this isn't your ending. That there was a much more glorious ending so the next interview I had was with Imperial College London. 
And you can just imagine how much I rehearsed over and over again how I would answer that question about my disability. That was all I was worried about. But as soon as I entered that interview room, I was filled with this great warmth and light. And the professors greeted me with big smiles. And they treated me like an able and gifted student. And I was the one who couldn't even multiply two numbers together because that's how nervous I was. <laughs> But they treated me like a worthy student. And thankfully, after a few weeks, they offered me a conditional offer, which meant that as long as I had my grades, that I was in. But before I even found out that I had my exam results, and especially when I really thought that I didn't do well in my math exam, the one exam that I really needed to ace, they called me to invite me over to check out this dorm room that they were renovating completely for my needs. My mom and I went to check it out anyway, and we were speechless. This room was double the size of an average student room, because it was meant to be for a wheelchair user. But the room became available for me, and the room also had an ensuite that was bigger than my current ensuite at home. And all the other students had to share a bathroom, so no other student could imagine having a room like this. That's when it clicked that maybe this was the place that was meant for me all along. Thankfully, after a long, grueling summer of waiting for my exam results, it was confirmed that I got a place at Imperial College. And it was during my first week of my freshman year that as I was struggling to open the door to the halls of residence, a tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed student came along and helped open that door for me, who would then become my friend my study buddy, and then my best friend, and my husband a few years later. And now we live in Westport with two beautiful boys and another baby on the way. And to add the cherry on top of that story, Os um, Imperial College beat Oxford University in the university rankings that year. <laughs> and um, Imperial College still stands as one of the top 10 universities in the world. A lot of people ask me, including children, what happened to your aunt? But the truth is, I believe a miracle happened because I was created in the most unique way to ensure that rather than living a life trying to be, rather than living an ordinary life trying to be normal, that I would um, strive to live an extraordinary life. And who would have known that about two and a half years ago? Um, through a ministry called We Want More, that um, I would be given an opportunity to paint in front of a dozen women and share my gift and my story. And it took an incredible amount of courage and faith to step into something completely unknown because I had never, never done anything like that before. But because it took such a great amount of boldness to... to step into this challenge like a fierce lion where, my, where the fire inside me became so much greater than my fears, I recognized this as my calling. And ever since then, I've been painting at various events and at schools, painting with children, painting for youths, women, men of all ages, from all kinds of backgrounds, from all parts of the world. And I've been able to share my gift and my story um, through my online blog as well. As a parent, I want my children to know that there is no fear that they cannot, they cannot overcome. And by being different myself, I am showing them that I'm not perfect, and I don't expect them to be perfect either. That we are all perfectly imperfect. And I just want them to um, face the challenges that they will face in their, in their own lives fiercely rather than fearfully. One of the greatest things that um, my parents once told me while I was growing up was how the Greek sculpture of Venus de Milo would probably not be considered as one of the world's most beautiful sculptures had it had full length arms. And this just gave me a beautiful image of myself as a masterpiece created for a special purpose. I believe we are all disabled and broken in some way. It could be something mental or physical, something that can be seen or unseen. We are all imperfect. 
but I really believe that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of our creator where every crack or imperfection in our own masterpiece is there for a beautiful purpose. And before I end, I, I would just like to share one of my creative videos which represents my story of courage, perseverance and faith. Courage because it took courage to, um, to create this piece of art which, um, which makes a bold statement of my faith. Perseverance because it wasn't easy at all painting on the wet surface of my driveway where the chalk kept breaking apart and my toes were in pain and they were rubbing against the rough surface of the tarmac. And faith because it took faith to believe that I could do this and that I would have the confidence to share this with you all today. So thank you very much.